In this video, we learn how to find the direction cosines of a line from its given direction ratios. We measure the direction of a line like we do with vectors. We find direction ratios and direction cosines. And in most cases, we'll be given direction ratios and we need to find direction cosines. So let's learn how we do that. Let A, B and C be direction ratios of a line. Now direction ratios are just ratios. They're not unique. They could be any multiple of direction cosines. So how we get from A, B and C to L, M and N. So DCs and DRs, cosines and ratios will be in proportion. We can use the fact that L by A equals to M by B equals to N by C equals to some constant K. And we can figure this constant out. L becomes AK, M becomes BK and N becomes CK. Now we have a special relationship between L, M and N. If we add their squares, we get one. So L square plus M square plus N square is one, which means A square K square plus B square K square plus C square K square, that's equal to one. So this equation gives us the value of K. In fact, it gives us two values of K. K square equals to one by A square plus B square plus C square, or K equals to plus minus one by root A square plus B square plus C square. So if we know A, B and C, if we know the direction ratios, we can figure out this constant and we can take either of these values plus or minus to get our direction cosines. Now, which value to pick depends on the context, depends on which direction are we headed. So if we're headed in the same direction as the point which has coordinates A, B and C, we'll take the positive values. If we're heading in the opposite direction, we'll take the negative value. So if we take K as positive, we'll get this line. If we take K as negative, we'll get an opposite line. Now, both of these are the same line. They're not two different lines. The difference here is the direction in which we're headed. If we're heading one way, we'll get one set of L, M and N, one set of cosines. If we're heading the opposite way, we'll get the negatives of them. We'll get the opposite direction cosines. Now, if you plug in the values, we'll get L equals to plus minus A times the constant. That's A divided by root A square plus B square plus C square. For M, we have B on top and for N, we have C on top. Now let's practice. Find direction cosines of a line with direction ratios as minus 18, 12 and minus 4. So we have A, B and C. Let's first find the constant. Then we can apply the formula for L, M and N. So let's find square root of A square plus B square plus C square. That's root of 18 square is 324, 12 square is 144 and minus 4 square is 16. So adding all of them up gives us 484. Root of 484 is 22. That's a perfect square. So L equals to plus minus. Now this one is minus 18. So minus 18 by 22. M is plus minus 12 by 22. And N is plus minus minus 4 by 22. The obvious question is which ones to pick? How do we decide? So if we take the positive sign, if the signs of direction cosines match the signs of direction ratios, we'll get this set. We'll get L as minus 18 by 22, 12 by 22 and minus 4 by 22. We keep the signs same as the direction ratios, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative. So this is one set. And then we get the opposite set. If you move in the opposite direction, we'll get L as negative of this, 18 by 22, M as negative of this, minus 12 by 22 and N as negative of this, that's 4 by 22. So how do we make sense of these two? We get the direction cosines as this first set when we're moving from the origin towards a point which has the coordinates the same as the direction ratios. So if you move from origin towards minus 18, 12, minus 4, we'll get this set of direction cosines. If you move in the opposite direction, if you move from minus 18, 12, minus 4, if you move from this point towards origin, we'll get this opposite set. All right. Now, how do we find the direction cosines of a line passing through two points? Again, the same approach as we used for vectors. If these were two points and these were the position vectors for those two points, let's label them as P1 and P2. Then this vector is the difference of these two vectors, these two position vectors. If OP1 vector is known and OP2 vector is also known, then P1, P2 vector, this vector, this is the vector that is from this point towards this point. This is the initial point. This is the terminal point. That's equal to OP2 vector minus OP1 vector. So this gives us P1, P2 equals to X2 minus X1 I cap 
plus y2 minus y1 j cap plus z2 minus z1 k cap. And these are the coordinates for these points. We can take the magnitude as well, mod of p1, p2. This vector is square root of this square plus this square plus this square. So this is what we did for vectors. We'll do the same thing for lines as well. If you have to figure out the direction cosines, we'll say that L is equal to plus minus. Again, plus and minus depends on which direction we are headed. So that's equal to x2 minus x1 divided by the magnitude. M equals to y2 minus y1 divided by the magnitude and N equals to z2 minus z1 divided by the magnitude of the vector between these two points. And the sign of plus or minus depends on which direction we're headed. If we take the plus sign, we're headed from P1 towards P2. If we have the negative sign, we're moving from P2 towards P1. Let's take an example. Find the direction cosines of a line passing through these two points. Now pause the video, try this out. Okay. So if these points are labeled, if we have A and B, then let's find the magnitude, let's find the length of this line segment AB. That's the magnitude of the vector AB. So that's going to be minus two minus one square plus four minus two square plus minus five minus three square, square root of all of this. So that's square root of three square nine, two square four and eight square 64. So that's 73 plus four, 77. So the magnitude is root 77. All right. Now, what are the direction cosines of a line passing through these two points? Well, it can have two sets. The first one is when we're headed from A to B. And the second set is when the line is directed from B to A. And we have to be careful here. L equals to, if you're moving from A to B, which means B is the final one. So one minus minus two. We take this as the final point. This is the initial point. So one minus minus two divided by the magnitude. That's root 77. M equals to, 2 minus 4 divided by root 77 and n equals to 3 minus minus 5 divided by root 77. So if we simplify, we get L as 3 by root 77, M as minus 2 by root 77 and n as 8 by root 77. And if you flip them, we'll get the line directed from B to A. We'll get a negative sign here, a positive sign here and a negative sign here. Now this is how we can get direction cosines from direction ratios or the coordinates of the points. But can we get direction cosines directly from the angles that the line makes with the axis? Pause the video, try this problem. Find the direction cosines of a line making 90 degrees, 135 degrees and 45 degrees with X, Y and Z axis respectively. All right, let's solve this together. For this, we'll use the basic definition of L, M and N, the direction cosines. They're actually the cos of the angles that this line makes with these axes. So cos of alpha, that's cos of 90. The x axis, that's a zero. Cos of beta is cos 135, that's minus one by root two. And cos of gamma, that's cos 45, that's one by root two. And you get the direction cosines directly. The direction cosines are zero, minus one by root two, and one by root two. One last problem. Find the direction cosines of a line making equal angles with the axis. All right, so if the angles are equal. What can we say about the direction cosines? Pause the video, think about it. Okay, so if the angles are equal, the cos must be equal as well, which means L, M, N, all three of them are equal. So we can use our equation, L square plus M square plus N square equals to one. Here, all three of them are equal. This means three L square equals to one. This means L equals to one by root three plus or minus, because we have a square here. And plus and minus will give us two sets. One set is one by root three, one by root three, one by root three. And another set is minus one by root three, minus one by root three, and minus one by root three. So two different direction cosines depending on which direction we are looking at. 